We're counting down the top 10 Indianapolis 500s of all time here at NBC Sports. Nate Ryan, and I'm joined by two of the voters in our poll. We have Paul Page, longtime announcer of the Indy 500 for ABC and ESPN. And we have Doug Bowles, the president of Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Both of you are, have voted for the number six race on our list. This is the oldest race on our list. Um, and it's a very significant historical race on our list. It's 1936, the Indy 500. Uh, many big traditions came out of this race, but I'm going to start with the, the most famous one, Doug, that is still around at your racetrack more than uh, or almost 90 years later, uh, was that three-time winner, Louis Meyer, who, by the way, was the first three-time winner of the race. After he won, he asked for a glass of buttermilk in Victory Lane. Um, he was handed... It to him in a glass bottle. He took a swig and the Indiana Dairy Association kind of like that uh, image. And uh, it's stayed at the track ever since. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Every time you come into the Indianapolis Motor Speedway today, you think about 1936 because one of our most precious traditions is that bottle of milk that our driver drinks at the end of the race inside Victory Lane. And it is one of the strongest and longest lasting traditions, maybe other than driving over a yard of bricks there at the end and 500 miles. So every race that we have, 36 race for sure. In addition, as you mentioned, Louis Meyer, the, one of our first three time winner winning it. But that bottle of milk at the end of race day is a tradition. He had no idea he was going to start. And today we it is our favorite one we have. Yeah, and that's um, there's there's so many things about the 1936 race that, that make it just totally special in terms of Indy 500 history. I was at a function today for lunch and they gave uh, the speaker a bottle of milk and we were all yelling, dump it over your head, but they, they wouldn't comply. Now the Indiana Dairy Association likes the drivers to drink it. Um, and, you know, for them, that's, the, that's why they do it. But, you know, we've seen that tradition over the last few years, they take the drink and then they're so excited. They have to dump it over their head. You know, Louis Meyer was drinking it cause he was thirsty and he needed a refreshment after 500 miles. Our drivers right now, it's a, it's definitely a shower and a celebration for sure. Yeah, uh, is it, is it still Doug, uh, like a security thing, escorts to the bottle and everything to make sure it gets there? So we have a, we have an Indiana dairy farmer that gets chosen actually two years before they get a chance to walk through a year as the rookie. And then their second year, they actually are the farmer. They have the, they have the, the cooler. They're entrusted with that for the day. It stays with them the entire day. There's a bottle of milk in there that, that has whole milk, 2% skim milk. So that whenever the driver wins, they know what bottle of milk they selected and they can pull that out and, and hand it to the driver. It's not security, but I'll tell you what, some of those dairy farmers, they're gonna protect that with their lives. <laughs> Well, let me ask you, Paul, you've seen a lot of drivers celebrate with milk ever since that first time in 1936. Right. Do you have a favorite milk celebration by an Indy 500 winner? Um, for some reason, uh, uh, power really jumps out at me because uh, he, was, he was a surprise uh, kind of across the board. Normally, he was this fairly sedate, I want it, thank you all very much kind of guy. But he won the Indy 500 and he went, he just went berserk. I mean, he was so happy he didn't believe it and it, the whole thing became became a big deal the milk everything and and he he went nuts for like three days it was it was a total switch of his personality in in the winter sir you know my biggest thing is the promoter of the 500 i don't care who wins but i want the person to win to celebrate it like it's the most important thing on the world and paul you're right will power was psychotic almost with his <laughs> eyes were going different directions and he was it was pretty powerful for me, Nate. My favorite one, and I think started a lot of this, was just the way that Dan Weldon celebrated his second Indy 500 win mm -hmm. and drank that milk and poured it on him, and then took it. You know, walked out to the yard of bricks, lying in the yard of bricks, smelling like milk. I mean, to <laughs> me, that is maybe one of my favorite celebrations, as much because it was Dan, but certainly the way he celebrated with the milk. Yeah, because I mean, certainly that's a that's a great tribute, and again, throwback all the way to 1936, Louis Meyer being the first one to drink the milk. Uh, an interesting note. Uh, again, another tradition that came out of this race and that Louis Meyer became a three-time winner. Uh, Tommy Milton was also a two-time Indy 500 winner, he, uh, so Meyer passed him. And Milton was the pace car driver in 1936, and he suggested that the race winner, Paul, be awarded the pace car uh, as part of the winning prize package, another tradition that has, has lasted all the way through to today. Yeah, can you imagine what the Packard Automobile Company thought when Tommy Milton just gave away the pace car? <laughs> There's, you know, there's other other stuff. Um, the Borg Trophy. 
It's 1936. It it has to be in the top 10 because of all the reasons we're talking about. There's no doubt that that race is a top 10 race. Oh, yeah. The most recognizable trophy in the world, by the way. But you also had the first rookie test at, at that race. And you also had the first time a driver could not start the Indy 500. His car wouldn't start. And he, that's the first time they ever had that where the full field didn't roll away. So there are a lot of firsts in that race. It's yeah. It's when you look back on it, you know, it's, there are a lot, you know, we've got a lot of great races, but that is a race that because of the traditions that started there, still you, you talk about it and you see it in every single race we have up to this point and going forward, that bottle of milk, that Borg Warner trophy, the tradition of giving the pace car, all those things have roots in that one race. It, it's pretty spectacular when you look at it with, with a large perspective. Yeah, and with those traditions, you, you, you get a reverence out of the fans and everything. I mean, they flock to see the trophy. Uh, they they have their own little ceremonies when they come to the race, and yeah. part of them is making sure that all of these first-time events uh, continue to happen in a specific order. Uh, the pre-race for a lot of people is almost as important as the 500-mile race itself. It, 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 that is 100% true. The, the pre-race, for me, that's my favorite time of the year. And I love the race, but as soon as pre-race is over and cars roll off the grid, I can't wait for that first lap, but at some level, it's like, man, I got to wait a whole year to do all this again and get ready to run the Indianapolis 500. I know the most important part of the day for those race car drivers though, is that bottle of milk. You know, the, um, the pre-race, uh, when I first came to the track in 60 as a 15 year old kid, I didn't want to go, uh, because we had been stationed in Germany and I'd seen a formula one race. So I was, total Formula One snob. Um, But then even before the race started, just with the ceremonies, I was, I was sold. I I had to be part of the Indianapolis 500. It's a, it's definitely a special moment. There's nothing like it in sports. So, you know, I get asked all the time, how do you explain that to somebody? You just can't, you just really have to come and experience it. And and it's uh, not unlike you, Paul, I was speaking today earlier to a group as well. And I had a gal come up to me afterwards and just talking about the race and her memories of the race, she starts getting chill bumps on her arms. And it's just, yeah. the place does something magical. I can't imagine what it must be for a race car driver who gets to live some of those 1936 traditions after they win the 500. While it's not a first, one of the things that I really like about it is Louis Meyer, um, he led for like 96 laps, almost half the race, but he was running out of fuel at the end and he was worried whether or not he was going to be able to make that last stop. And part of the reason he was he, he was worried about fuel was he went 350 miles without refueling. Imagine doing that today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that'd be that'd be tough in today's world. So another 1936 story that happened in 2021, no, 2022. Sorry, I got a package here uh, in the office that came from Team Penske, and I wasn't sure. And it said Tim Sendrick on the outside of it, mm-hmm. and I opened up this package, and in it was a framed photo of Louis Meyer, and it was signed to Doug from Louis Meyer. And I thought this is really bizarre. So I called <laughs> Tim. I said, "What's the story behind this?" He said, "I was at an estate." Uh, looking for some some old racing things and ran across this. And he said, I knew that you had to have this uh, because it was signed to somebody else named Doug from Louis Meyer. So I have in my office a really cool Louis Meyer signed autograph, especially written to Doug. Wow, that's cool. That's pretty fitting coming from uh, a, about to be enshrined Indianapolis Motor Speedway Hall of Famer as well in Tim Sendrick. Yeah, it's very, very cool. It was, uh, I, I was a total surprise. And at first I looked at it and said, how can this be? And then when he explained it, it was, it's pretty neat. So even that 1936 tradition lives, lives here in my office as well. Louis Meyer was a really neat person. After he stopped racing, he stayed involved. Hence you get the Louis Meyer Offenhauser engine, the Meyer Offenhauser. Uh, he had a great sense of humor. I was sitting with him one time when we were talking about firsts at the Indy 500, Ray Haroon, the first rear view mirror, and uh, shock absorbers were essentially developed at the Speedway. The turbo that's in your car now was developed primarily through Indy car racing. But he looked and he, and he said, you know, the first seat belt was also developed at Speedway. I said, I'm not so sure. I, I, I think I've read somewhere that that's not true. He says, oh, well, what we did, it, two man cars, he had a riding mechanic. So we roped the riding mechanic in so he wouldn't jump out during a pit stop. So that was <laughs> William Meyer's humor. Yeah, you know, um, Paul, I'm glad you brought up safety because we were talking about that uh, a little before we got started. And Doug, I wanted to just touch on that, that uh, of course, 
the Indy 500 in the early days, especially was very dangerous, but this was the only race between 1929 and 1940 where there wasn't a fatality. Uh, and there was the rookie test that they had to pass that probably enhanced the safety. Uh, I know there were some track upgrades. They changed some of the walls. Um, yeah. and of course I know all that safety continues today, but a lot of that probably can be traced back to some of those improvements that were made in 1936. Yeah, absolutely. The thirties was a time where in our racing, a lot of things happened. So we did the safety walls. We were, we, we tested out caution lights that the first helmets started to become seen and known and ultimately uh, became mandatory at the speedway. So even in its early days, because the, you went through so many of those years where you had fatalities, you started paying attention to it. That rookie test was extremely important to make sure that somebody knew how to drive around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, extremely high speeds down the front stretch, heavy braking to get through the corners at a slower speed. It was completely different than what other what people had done up to that point. So those rookie tests were important, and a lot of that is rooted in 1936 and the 30s. Yeah, and speaking of safety, the uh, fireproof driver suit. You know, these guys used to race in a T-shirt, um, but the Nomex fire suit was developed there, and you know, it went on became a, a you know a key thing in safety. Pilots wear them now, uh, fighter pilots and everything. All the special operators, the special forces, they wear them. So an another thing came. It really was developed at the speedway. Hi folks, Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.